Hey guys and a very warm welcome to Simply Learn. In this video on PHP web development, we will learn how to create a website with the help of PHP. We'll also be using HTML, CSS, Bootstrap and MySQL in this tutorial. So get ready to create your very own website. Now before we get started with the step by step tutorial, let me give you a glimpse of the website that I'll be building in this video. So let me just quickly go to my browser and type in localhost followed by the name of the folder where I have created the website. So I'll be making a photo gallery website like this. So in case you're a photographer, you can build a similar website in order to showcase your talent. And if not, you can always create your own personal website for anything you're passionate about. So Without any further delay, let's get right on to a tutorial. So first things first, let me show you the environment that we'll be working on while creating a website. So we are going to be needing two softwares that is Visual Studio Code that we'll be using as our ID, the code editor and the second one would be XAMPP. Now XAMPP is a web server solution package which we generally use in order to manage a database and create a local web server. You can download it from these respective websites since I've already download, downloaded both of these softwares so we'll be skipping that. Now let us begin. So after that you've installed both of these softwares just go to your C drive Locate XAMPP folder and inside the XAMPP folder look for htdocs and inside this htdocs name a folder you can name it anything I'll be naming it photo since I'm creating a website regarding photos and then right click inside this folder and click on open with code So this opens up our Visual Studio code and as you can see our photo folder is visible here. Now also one thing that we need to do is go back to this photo folder, right click and create two new folders. First one would be CSS. So it's considered a good practice even if you're using a single, just a single CSS file, it is considered a good practice to create a separate CSS folder inside your project folder. Also create another folder and name it images. So this is where we'll be keep, keeping all the images for the website. So let us go back to Visual Studio Code. So as you can see both of these folders are now visible here. Now go on and click on new file. The first file that we are going to create is index.php and inside this index.php we will be writing the code for the main page of a website. So let us start. First click on an exclamation mark and as you can see a block of code already written is visible here now. So we just need to add a few things. First let us put the title, the title would be of course photo gallery. Next up we need to add a few links to our web page in order for it to function well. So the first link would be
this is a link to link this page to bootstrap you can also easily find it on the internet or you can just type in from here let me just go to the browser to check if this link is working yeah seems fine to me now we are going to add another link to it now this link will be for the link for a CSS file that we'll be creating later on since we'll be putting that CSS file inside a CSS folder I am going to link it to style.css so that's it we are done for the first part of a code now let's end this head section and move on to the body section of our web page so inside this body section what we first need is to add a few scripts for our page which will be responsible for the design of our web page so these are the three scripts that I'll be linking to our web page you can just look and write them as it is also keep these three scripts at the end of your body so any code that we'll be writing inside body will be above these three scripts now let's design the web page so the first thing that we'll be needing is a navigation bar in a web page so let us quickly go to the browser so instead of writing an entire big block of code we can just copy it from the internet so bootstrap provides you with many such designs so what we're going to do is we will type in navbar bootstrap and hit enter so as you can see just scroll down and as you can see this is the navigation bar which this code will display also there are different navigation bars according to your need along with the code so you can just copy any of the one you like I'm going to be copying this one click on copy go back to the code and just paste it so now what we have here is our navigation bar ready so let us go to the browser and check how does our web page look so after the local host what we're going to do is we will write the name of the folder in which we are writing our project which is photo well there seems to be some problem since this nav bar is lacking the css design let us go back to our code and see what went wrong well yes this css file that we linked here after css there is not a dot but a slash i think it should work fine now well the problem still persists let me go back and recheck well yeah i've made some spelling error here this is bootstrap not bootstrap and let us go back reload 
and yes as you can see our navigation bar is well and good let's go back and make some changes to our navigation bar the first change that i'm going to be making is i will change the color theme of the nav bar to dark not mark yeah go back reload and looks better now here photo gallery good also since i'll be using the drop down menu it is absolutely up to you if you want to use it or not since i'll be using it i'll just change the name to categories and the three category will be the first is nature photo photographs the second would be architecture and the third would be travel so let's go back refresh categories nature architecture and travel so this travel looks a little different from this nature and architecture so as you can notice this this line that is dividing this section to this section so let's go back so that line comes from this part of the code so we'll just copy and paste it here looks good now that we're back we don't need this disabled and the search bar so i'll be removing that particular part of the quotes and this form to go back to the browser refresh and all of the parts of the navigation bar that we don't need are now have now been removed also this link would be for about section of the web page and we will also add another section or another link that would redirect us to the contact part of the web page so to do that to add another link we will just copy this code and paste it and instead of about this will be contact go back refresh home contact about categories so this categories should come before these two so what we are going to do is we will just copy this section of the code and put it after the drop down menu right now go back refresh well we copied it instead of cutting it so it's now visible twice reload home categories contact and above looks perfect so you see now that's the beauty of building a website you don't have to write the entire code by yourself there are codes already written for all these kinds of stuff this navigation bar the carousel that i'm going to be using in the website the blocks of photos that we are going to display on the web page and a lot of design templates you can call them have already been written for you to use them instead of wasting your time and writing the entire long blocks of code now next up what i'm going to do is i'll just go back to our photo folder and inside this images i'll just 
copy the images that I've already downloaded. Copy. Go back. Images and paste it here. So now that we have our photos inside the images folder, let's go back to our code and write a carousel code or just copy it from the bootstrap. Go back to bootstrap. Here, look for carousel. So as you can see, this is what a carousel looks like. So a big photo in on the front of your web page as you already saw when I showed you the website. These are the different types of carousels available on the bootstrap website. You can use any of them. So the first one is just a single photo. Second one is slides of photos. Third is slides of photos with this marking. And the final one would be all of them combined with captions. So of course we'll be using the final one. So copy the code for the final carousel or whichever one you like and go back to your code and here after this navigation bar paste your carousel code click on save go back and refresh so since we haven't added any images here there are none visible but you can see this carousel has been added to our web page so let's go back and now we are going to add the images that we just pasted in this images folder so in this carousel code look for image src so this is the location of the image that will be displayed so type in images that is the name of the folder from where you will be picking up the images put a slash and let me just go back to this images architecture for yep so architecture for in this alt type in architecture and here is the heading so this is part of the caption of the carousel so I'll be writing architecture here and I'll make this heading a little bigger it's three I think h3 would do and I don't want to add any more descriptions if you do you can write all of that inside this paragraph but I won't be so I'll just remove it from here I'll do the similar with this so what we're going to do is we will write images slash and go back what image I'm going to be adding nature 4 would do nature 4 type in nature similar to what we did above h3 h3 remove this and now here the last one would be travel h3 h3 and let me just type in the travel 5 travel 5 and in this alt 
type travel and we are good to go okay let's reload and voila so our images are visible here with this beautiful carousel and you can forward them and well does this not look beautiful to you so architecture nature and travel but as you can see we have some problem here the images are way too big to fit on this part of the screen and it's going all the way down and this part of the carousel is not visible on the main page when someone opens the website which absolutely does not look good so what we're going to do for it now to fix this what we're going to do is we will go back to our code editor inside the CSS folder we will create the file that we linked at the start of our tutorial style.css and here just write this code margin 0 adding also 0 and box sizing would be border box so now to display the images on the just on the main page of our website what we're going to do is we will put a dot go back to the main index.php and from here copy this name of the class carousel item go back to style.css paste it here carousel item and type ing and inside this we will define the width and the height of the image so the width would be 100 percent and we are going to keep the height at 95 vh so that it does not go beyond the web page let us quickly save it go back reload and yes it looks great and it's also visible on our screen now now next up what we're going to do is we will be creating different sections on this very web page for the different categories that is nature architecture and travel so go back to the code under this carousel code let us start writing our first section that would be section class so i'll be using my4 and pi4 the first div So what we want is we want the text to be in the center of the page so the class would be text center and the first category is nature. Now the next thing that we need to do is we need to add the images to it. So how do we do that? Also, we are not to display a single image on, a, on the entire web page. What we need is we need to display small three blocks of images in a row. So, we need to create another div class. And inside the class, we will define the column for large systems. For the mid ones and for the mobile devices so 
after you have written this class after you written this div the images doesn't matter the size of the screen only three images will be displayed on a large and middle screen and a single image will be visible when open on a mobile phone so all in all your website would be very responsive to all the devices that you will be using let's just close it and inside this div what we're going to do is we will link our image and the image would be since this is nature let's use nature one which image we have, we have already used in the carousel nature four so let's skip that and put the class as fluid and padding bottom padding would be three well i think it's done so this is the first section let's go to our page refresh so nature and our first image is also visible here so what we need is we need to display two more images in this row go back and it's now all copy and paste just not this part this part of code copy paste and paste so now nature 2 and nature 3 go back refresh okay this seems to be a problem here let us figure out why this is happening okay we forgot to add the row div and without the row div the images will not be displayed in a row but of this so container fluid i'm using this since just a second let me paste it here yeah and we will create another div named row and our entire code will go inside it and we'll paste it let's go back and check if it changes anything and it does so our images are displayed perfectly our first section that is nature for our category is complete now now next what we need to do is i think you guessed it we just need to copy this section and paste it twice since there are two more sections so after the first section in the second one would be for architecture the images we need to change architecture one architecture two and architecture three yeah refresh nature architecture and well nature again because we did not edit the third part of the code so the third part of the code will be for travel 
let us quickly add the images so travel to travel for and I think we use travel five already so travel six and go back refresh and travel images architecture and nature so half of our website is already done guys now what we need to do is we need to create two more sections for the contact and about so for the contact part of the web page we'll be needing a form that we will then go on and link to a database that we'll be creating later on and the about section will be responsible to give a uh, some information regarding the website regarding the photographer that have uploaded the images so let's go back to our code and move on to creating another section for the contact so wait let me just copy only this section of the code and of course we'll be needing a closing tag this will be contact us and let's create another div class would be fifty and m auto so why i'm doing this is because inside the contact we'll be creating a form where there will be columns and to manage the width and margin of these columns i am writing the class for it inside this tip we will write a form inside the form the first thing that we need is action and the action for the form will be about dot php this is a file that we'll be creating later on and the next thing is method which will be post let's close this create another div class named form group okay form group close it inside this i'll write a label that would be name this will be our first column input type text of course let's give it a name so this is very important so the name that you're going to write here should be matching should be matching with the name in the database and class um, control now just copy this paste and paste so the second section would be for email type will also be email name will also be email third would be for the number let us keep the type text in case someone wants to enter the std codes and let's go back refresh check 
contact us the fields are visible now what we need is a submit button so after this diff let me create a button type submit class so this will make the button look green adding some CSS and the button would be called submit go back refresh submit button is here now let us also create a section for the about part of the page and then we'll move on to making a database so to do that what we need to do is we'll just copy this section for the about paste it here close the section and here let's start writing the code the class container fluid so why are we using this container fluid class is because sometimes when you don't use this class the images or text from your web page tends to create so you can see a scroll bar here vertically it tends to create another scroll bar horizontally which we don't want so container fluid close this div inside it let me create a class text center it will say the name Mac we just give some space and write a paragraph with a class of course text center otherwise if the text will start from the extreme left it would look weird and close it let's add some bold and write let's see i am a passionate photographer interested in working architecture nature and travel photography next would be um, a full time freelancer with an experience of five years well i think this would do refresh oh we did not change this we'll just get right on to it contact us i'm a passionate photographer interested in working architecture nature travel photography freelancer and all of the things that we just written about mac we just need to change this to about and i think we're done yes so our web page is almost complete guys now we need to do some changes or add some things so the first thing that we'll be adding is an about.php file 
and inside this about.php file we will be creating a connection with our database and fetching the data from it or sending the data from our form to the database so before that let's go back to the browser type in localhost followed by php my admin click enter but before that you must open xam control panel and start the apache server and mysql server since i already did i did not show you the steps so after the mysql server has been started you can see this php my admin panel and from here we can create databases so inside this php my admin click on new and let us name our database as photography click on create now what we are going to do is we will create a table where the data will be stored from our form let us name the table as users number of columns would be four the first column would be course id which will be auto incremented the second column would be name type variable character 250 third is email also variable character 250 and the final was a number variable character 250 and click on save so as you can see the structure of our table the table users has been created inside the database photography now we need to go back to our code and write the code php code to connect our form to this database so first variable that i'll be creating is con to connect the database since a server is locally hosted the name of the server would be localhost root that is the default now if connection so this if condition will check if the connection is successful or not and if successful display connection successful next also add if the connection is not successful we should always have an error message connection failed next what we need to do is we need to sqli select underscore db and inside this we need to mention the name of our database which is photography let's just go back and recheck photography because the name is very important if you mess with the name the entire code goes to win now let me create some variables which will fetch the data from the form in order to send them to the database so let's keep the same names so that we don't create any confusion email and of course number post
so now that we have our variables we need to run a query so since we are fetching the data from the form and inserting it into a table we need to run a query for insert into the name of the table that is users and then name email number followed by the values that we'll be giving them so notice this is the name of the fields that you've given in your table and this a these values are these variables that we've just created so inside it name second would be email and third would be number I think the query is done now to check if it works we will run another query and I am going to add a header file here because once you click on submit button let me just go back so if you click on submit button here the page will redirect to a different page which will just display connection successful we don't need that we need to stay on this page itself so in order to do that I am writing this header file with the location of index.php enter and I think we are done here now let's go back and add some details Mac Mac at the rate simply learn dot com number would be one two three four five six seven eight nine zero click on submit go back to your database click on browse and if the connection was would be successful you can see the data here and we can mac email and number that's great so now let's move on to the final section of the website so how do we make this categories navbar work well it's pretty simple we just need to redirect to a section of a web page whenever clicked a button so when we click on nature we need our web page to be redirected to this section so let's just go back to our code and what we are going to be doing is we will create links just a second for every section of our web page so let's go back to the first section that is nature and here right give it an ID so the ID for this section would be nature close the tag cut and paste it here so as you can see this ID this section of our web page is enclosed in this ID so now with this a tag we can refer our this section of the web page to any button similarly we will add another id here so the id would be architecture of course make sure the spellings are correct put it after the section now 
go back a id this would be travel okay just a second cut it paste it here again what I'm going to do is instead of writing it again and again I'll just copy it from here paste it since this is contact us let me just put contact here contact yep and the section right and this will be of course about yes good now what we need to do is we need to refer these sections with the respective ids to the buttons go back to the navbar code on your web page so here is a navbar code so inside it you can see after every button there's a reference you just need to add the name of your id do not remove this and architecture travel contact and about let's go back refresh click on categories okay what happened here okay no nature yep travel yep contact about so everything works perfectly now so while we're at it let me just okay let me first show you mm, rob rob at the rate start dot com one two three four five 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 click on submit so as you can see whenever you click on submit it redirects you to the front of the web page I don't want that yeah the database is working so just go back to the about.php and here we added the header location index.php so it is redirecting the code to the start of the web page what we need to do is we need to redirect it to a particular section that is contact so just add contact in front of it save go back scroll down tony tony at the rate stock industries.com click on submit and as you can see after you click on submit the page does not go back to the starting it just stays here while the data has been submitted to our database now that we have completed our website a quick question for you guys if you were asked to create a website based on your interests what would the website be about let us know in the comment section below so that's it for this video guys thank you for watching and i hope you liked it and if you did do hit the like button and subscribe to simply learn for more such content stay safe and keep learning Hi there, if you like this video, subscribe to the Simply Learn YouTube channel and click here to watch similar videos. To nerd up and get certified, click here.